It happened here. Right on this spot. I dropped it here. Right by the door here. Well, I didn't mean to drop it. It wasn't like me to do such a thing. And the farmer's nephew, he stood there, right where you are now. Is this yours, he said. He told me he'd seen me. He'd seen me here scribbling things down. Well, I expected that he'd tell on me and they'd ask me to leave. I'd lose my job. Anyway, you know all this, don't you? Everyone knows this. My wonderful story. But you don't know this part. When Mrs. Fison told me she liked my poem and she wanted to see more, I never told you this, I almost cried. Stupid, I know. A stranger like her, in front of her to cry. Well, I managed to stop myself, but she could see. Mrs. Fison. I dedicated my book to her. Where is it? Here. To Mrs. Robert Dillamore Fison, through whose unbounded kindness and generous efforts, the author has been enabled to publish his poems. You remember her, don't you, Mrs. Fison? She'd sometimes come to the house. Song of the Incendiary, it was called. The poem he found. It was about the burning down of the barn. I remember I stood right here. No, no, that's wrong. Nearer to the wall. Yeah, closer to here, I think. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> there was a workbench there with sacks. It's really strange to be back. I always wrote on scraps. <laughs> it's funny how you find things. If you look, discarded, dropped. Oh. Oh. My knees aren't what they used to be. Told you I'd find one. you're wondering what I just wrote down. Well, I wrote, I must remember to thank her for being so kind, for bringing me here. Never lost one. So nervous I was, they'd be found. Till I lost this one, of course. You know this. But you don't know the rest.
30 years back, I came here to start a fire. To burn this barn down. Yes, me. Dreadful fool I was back then. <laughs> Nothing's changed, you probably think. Over by the church, down by the field there, we, we walked past it on the way, remember? With the big old ash tree. Well, the talking went on all day. Loud, loud it was too, loud and angry. And in the end, we agreed to go home and fetch matches and coal and come back here and start the fire. Right here. Me. Well, I haven't said much, you know what I'm like. But the rest of them, they talked and talked and talked. I'd worked with them for years on the farms around here, those men. Each one of us poor and starved. And that was at the old rate of pay. Well, I was a bag of bones in those days. Can you imagine? Me, as a bag of bones. Everyone was then. Well, the meeting went on. And the more it went on, the more angry and wild it became. I couldn't rest. So I come down here as soon as it was dark. Because I didn't want to miss anything. Well, no one was here when I came. I waited so long, I wondered if I'd come to the right place. Or maybe they'd change their minds. I even thought about doing it on my own. I only had to light the coal and place it on the wood by the door there. Over there, see? <laughs> no one would think it was me. <laughs> Never said a cross word back then. Quiet one. No one even noticed I was there half the time. Always looking on from the side. Out of sight. Well, you know what it's like. You're a shy one too. Well, once the talk had turned to the fire, we knew it had to be here. Well, a farmer here. Always so mean and rude he was. He stood out in that yard, out there, gathered us there. I haven't any choice, he said. I'm going to have to halve your pay, and even then I'll make a loss. Well, we complained and cussed. Plenty more where you came from, he said. Better than you. I mean, just look at you. You may leave if you want, but the rate of pay is the same on all the farms round here. It's agreed. He stood on the back of that car, looked down at us, and then smiled, jumped off, and walked away, strutted away. Well, no one knew I was there, so I could have just lit the coal and jammed it in the straw right there. Easy. I didn't do it, of course. More and more came. Out in the yard, we whispered at first, and no one wanted to be the first to light the fire. But then one man walked up with such a wild look on his face, all uncertainty was gone. He decided it had to be the large barn, not this one. <laughs> and when we got there, he quickly lit the coal and shoved it in the straw. As we watched, everyone silent as the flames took hold. Only then did the mad one 
shout out about how we were made to live so desperately through no fault of our own. About his wife who had died. Children would be next. There were tears in his eyes. Tears and flames. I'll never forget the look on his face. And then, as the flames grew strong, I threw in my own match with the rest of them. Yes, me. And then a light came on in the farmhouse. And we heard the door. And we turned and we run back to the night. Tis done, tis done, and the flames ascend. Wider they spread, and higher they rise. Then stealthily home my course I bend, while the red glow lights the surrounding skies. Well, I wonder if you've read that one. I wonder what you think if you had about your arsonist dad. Sometimes I just got swept up in things. Dreadful fool I was back then. Is this yours, he said. I almost said no. No, no, it's not mine. I never said it, but it was on my lips. I only said yes to get it back from the boy. I was worried they'd all read it and laugh at me. I believe my aunt might like this, he said. She loves to read, especially poetry. And I almost said no. No to the books and the tours. To Windsor Castle, Eton College, London. The Lake District, Paris, the Queen's Grant. Wonderful times they were. Wonderful. Almost said no to being able to pay the rent and buy food. Anyway, it's all gone now. No more books. And all the people who helped me, almost all of them have gone now. Sometimes I read my books and I see so much wrong with them, I want to destroy them. And I don't know what to do. Because the people who could have helped me are no longer around. Sometimes I think I was just a novelty for them. Someone to show off to the world. Sorry, that's not fair. Everyone was so kind to me. I don't know why they were so kind. But they were. Whenever I try to write now, nothing comes. I sit and stare at the fire, but nothing comes. That's why I've been so wretched lately. I couldn't take my eyes off that fire. I heard shouting and then beams falling. And then someone shouted out that the water had gone dry. It excited me so much to watch that fire. Afterwards, I thought it was wrong of me to think that way, but not at the time. It occurred to me then that everything I know was in that fire. Those years of being so poor, those years of having to choose between starvation or the workhouse, they're all burning in those flames. And my poor dead girl, she was in there too, in the flames.
nothing left of them, all burnt up and gone. I couldn't take my eyes off it. I watched that fire for hours. I imagined that the world had changed that night. And at dawn, there'd be a new one. Stupid, of course. Stupid. I often wished I'd not been cast in this mould. Often asked the question, why am I what I am? And back would come the answer. So far, so it seemed good in my sight. Oh, I'm sorry. I've upset you. I didn't mean that. That's the last thing I would want. It's my father's side, you see. Creeps up on me. Every now and then. Sneakily. The bastard. Anyway. He's gone now. I like this book. Back in the bag. And I've enjoyed this time with you so much. So please, give me a smile now. Come on. Please. The Song of the Incendiary When the wind is loud and the night is dark And the village is hushed in the arms of sleep And no one near my steps to mark Then away from my home I slyly creep To the barn I glide On the windward side Where the roof slopes low with its crispy thatch There's no one near There's naught to fear And now for the coal or the silent match Tis done, tis done and the flames ascend, wider they spread and higher they rise. Then stealthily home my course I bend, while the red glow lights the surrounding skies. And I join in the throng as they sweep along, and I shout as loud as the loudest there, and the sleepers awake who fear and quake, and can see the dressed in the ruddy glare. Hark, hark to the mournful low of the cattle, and list to the poultry's fearful scream. I love the noise, the confusion and rattle of crackling rafter and falling beam. To stack and shed the flames they spread, I joy as the fire flakes upward fly. And I love to hear that no water is near, and I grin with delight when the pumps are dry. Oh, I love to see on every tree the bright flames playing far and wide, making the darkness of night to flee and revealing the things that night would hide. See, see how they fall on the old church wall, and gild the vein on the old grey tower, and dance round the bed of the sleeping dead. You may read their names at the midnight hour. Some love to read of murmuring rills, and shady lanes and flowery vales, and waving woods and sunny hills, to me there's no charm in such flimsy tales. The volcano's frown and the burning town, these, these are the themes that never tire, and the order de fee and the wild settee, and my very dreams are of smoke and fire.